to hashtag that. I'm Grace Doyle. And I'm Liz Zipolito. From Doom Part 2 to Ariana Grande, we're back with the latest entertainment news updates. All that and more. Tune in from Hamden to Hollywood. We are your source for Quinnipiac's entertainment news. From him into Hollywood, we are your source for Quinnipiac's entertainment news. Comedian Richard Lewis has died at the age of 76 after a years-long battle with Parkinson's disease. Lewis, who was nicknamed the Prince of Pain, was known for his comedy, which spanned decades since the late 1970s. He was a regular on late-night television and often appeared on shows including The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Lewis's credits include a long-standing role as a fictionalized version of himself on the smash comedy series Curb Your Enthusiasm. Series creator Larry David paid tribute to Lewis in a statement shared by HBO. David said, quote, Richard and I were born three days apart in the same hospital, and for most of my life he's been like a brother to me. He had that rare combination of being the funniest person and also the sweetest. But today he made me sob, and for that I will never forgive him, end quote. R. Lance Hill is suing Amazon after alleging that the streamer used AI to replicate actors' voices. The writer of the original Roadhouse film that came out in 1989 filed a suit against MGM Studios and parent company Amazon for copyright infringement. Hill alleges that he filed a petition in 2021 requesting copyright for the original 1986 script, as it was set to expire in November 2023. Amazon ignored these claims and used AI to replicate the actor's voice for ADR during the SAG strike to complete the film for no its November 10th deadline. The suit reads, quote, on November 11, 2023, the screenplay's copyright thereby duly reverted to Hill under the Copyright Act. Yet in contradiction of the act's fundamental authorial termination right, defendants refused to acknowledge Hill's statutory termination instead. Defendants steamrolled ahead with the production of a remake of the 1989 film derived from Hill's screenplay, end quote. Actress Hunter Schaefer was taken into police custody last Monday during a demonstration planned to disrupt President Joe Biden's appearance on The Late Night with Seth Meyers. The protest organized by activist organization Jewish Voice for Peace took place at 30 Rockefeller Plaza, the headquarters of NBC Television in New York City. The Jewish anti-Zionist organization claimed more than 100 allies were present at the protest on Monday, with over 50 having been arrested, including the Euphoria star. The group's official account tweeted that the group was, quote, calling on Biden to stop supporting the Israeli government's genocide against Palestinians in Gaza, end quote. Ariana Grande is opening up about her new album that is to be released on March 8th. Her seventh studio album titled Eternal Sunshine is highly anticipated after her three-year hiatus. Grande appeared on the Zach Sang show, speaking out about how she wrote the songs during an emotional and turbulent time in her life. Grande told Entertainment Tonight, quote, What was beautiful about it was that while I was writing, there was no intention for the world to hear it. It was just like, let's, go, let's just go, let's just see what comes out, end quote. Grande has yet to speak on her high-profile divorce from Dalton Gomez last October. It has also been confirmed that Grande is still seeing Wicked co-star Ethan Slater. Through all the behind-the-scenes drama, fans are still so excited for Grande's new album, especially after she posted the track list to Instagram, confirming her grandmother will be featured. This week, Taylor DeLisi got an inside look at Quinnipiac Student Artist League Arts Leadership Conference. Let's take a look. Hey Hashtag, I'm Taylor DeLisi, and today I'm here at the second annual Student Artists League Arts Leadership Conference. The Arts Leadership Conference is a panel that features a variety of on-campus artists such as musicians, writers, painters, and more. Today we're going to hear from some of the board members and some of the panelists themselves. I think um, just coming to Sal and um, realizing that you are, you are kind of a leader in your own way. way. Um, um, people, people, again, have different art forms and different ways to lead. It's, it's important, important that, that we recognize that, that and you come to Sal and you recognize that your art form or however you express yourself may not, may not be communicated, be communicated on, campus, on campus, but you, but you can, can communicate on campus. campus. And there, and there are, are people who are willing, willing to support you, you even, even if they know nothing about it. 
So, so songwriters, songwriters then, then is like, like the group of songwriters, songwriters who, who come, come together, together for about four hours, uh, I want to say about once, once a month, month and, and they all they get all together, together uh, uh, 10 a.m. And, and, and they, they all just, just write, write a song, song as, as quick, quick as, as possible, and, and they get, they get, a, get like a, a solid, solid recording. recording. Yeah. It's, it's a, a great, great opportunity, opportunity to, to collaborate, collaborate even, even if you don't, you don't know, know anything about, about um, writing, writing music or music, music in, in general. There, there is, is so much room, room to work, work with different people, people. and what you, what you can, can do is that you can learn from everyone. everyone. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so it's my fashion, fashion magazine, magazine and I'm focused on promoting, promoting sustainable, sustainable and accessible, accessible fashion, fashion and, and I, do I do this by having models of themselves. We get recommendations from more affordable yet very Say high end fashion, fashion, I guess. I guess. Uh, uh, high, high end, end like aesthetically, aesthetically not, not like, like price wise. wise. Uh, uh, I, guess I guess my, my dream, dream is just, just to have, have a student, student open, open up, up a, a copy of Pentatone and see an entire, an entire outfit, outfit they like, like and just, just go, go buy it the next, next day. day. That's, That's like, like my dream. I would, I would say, say just promoting, promoting smaller, smaller artists, artists and smaller creative, creative people, people, I think, think um, any, any exposure is good exposure, so, so the, the fact that South gave a platform, platform for, for several artists, artists to do so, so is, is just amazing, amazing. and I feel like we need more of this on campus, campus because, because there, isn't there isn't a lot, a lot of respect, respect I, think, I think, for the arts on campus, and it's a very underlooked aspect of the school, so I feel that showing this is like the best thing ever. If you'd, if you'd like, like to get, get more involved, involved with South, you can, you can follow, follow them on Instagram, Instagram at Quinnipiac South, South or, or email, email President, President Sean Clamontes. I'm Taylor Delisi, and we'll be right, right back, back after, after this commercial, commercial break. break. Multiple studies have shown that the marijuana can slow both sides of the reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. This is here. Wait, 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 wait. What? If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, drive you're not, not okay, okay to drive. drive. Don't drive, drive bus. bus. Taylor Delisi is back for this week's hashtag Let's Get Real. Take it away, Taylor. Oh, no, wrong. Hello? The highly anticipated Dune Part 2 film. That's. Hello? Just been released to theaters, and here with her thoughts is Zoe Mitzel. That's when Paul goes to Arrakis to learn to be Fremen, where he meets Fremen warrior Chani, played by Zendaya. 
The film leaves us on a cliffhanger, setting up part two to tell the story between House Atreides and their enemy, House Harkonnen, and how this interplanetary war will unfold. The new film presents beautiful cinematography, filmed on location in the mountainous Badland, Norway, to represent Caliban, and the deserts of Jordan and the United Arab Emirates, where temperatures are said to have exceeded 120 degrees Fahrenheit for the planet Arrakis. With the desert air of Arrakis only strengthening his visions, Paul learns from the very opening of the movie that his mother, Lady Jessica, is pregnant with his little sister. The film dives headfirst into a pathetic, hero-based narrative as the people of Arrakis believe Paul Atreides is their messiah, whose son al Said, the prophesied savior, savior of the Fremen. The invaded character and many of her friends from the north do not believe in this prophecy, as she says it is a stubborn belief, and quote, you want to control people? Tell them a, a messiah will come, they'll wait for centuries, end quote. However, the Fremen leader, Stilgar, played by Javier Bardem, who first accepts Paul and his mother into their tribe, is a strong believer that Paul is the messiah they've been waiting for upon him the chosen one. Lady Jessica goes on to become a reverend mother, putting her unborn daughter in danger, and yet fully cementing her on the idea that her son really is the chosen one she thought he could be. Christopher Walken's appearance as the emperor is revealed alongside the portrayal of his daughter, Princess Erwin, aka Florence Pugh. Stellan Skarsgård and Austin Butler give memorable performances, as Baron Harkonnen and his nephew, Fader Alpha, both power-hungry and evil rulers, who saw the Atreides as their sworn enemy. From being honest, I found both their portrayals a little scary, but so well done and definitely effective in creating believable villains. The love story in the film takes on a hard plot twist, which if you have about three hours to spare, you can find out in theaters, but I think, although a bit long, it's a watch worthwhile. That's all I have. We'll be back to you guys after this commercial break. Hey, hashtag, it's Zoe. The long Taylor DeLisi is back for this week's hashtag, Let's Get Real. Take it away, Taylor. Thanks, guys. Andy Cohen is sued, being sued by former Real Housewives of New York City star Leah McSweeney. The civil lawsuit filed Tuesday in the Southern District of New York names Cohen, Bravo Media, NBC Universal Media, Warner Bros. Discovery Production Company, Shed Media USA, and producers John Paparazzo, Lisa Shannon, and Darren Ward. Within the 109-page complaint, McSweeney claims the defendants established a rotted workplace culture where employees were pressured to consume alcohol. She also alleges that the defendants failed to maintain a safe working environment and accommodate her disabilities, including, quote, alcohol use disorder and mental health disorders, end quote. McSweeney further claims that producers knew she suffered from alcohol use disorder, but discriminated against that and other mental health disorders by, quote, intentionally planning scenarios intended to exacerbate her disabilities to create morbidly salacious reality television, end quote. Former Vanderpump Rules stars Jax Taylor and Brittany Cartwright have announced that they will be separating after five years of marriage. Cartwright announced the news Thursday on their podcast, When Reality Hits. Quote, Jax and I are taking time apart and made the decision to move into another home to take some space for the sake of my mental health. Many of you guys have been asking Jax and I about our relationship. I just think it's important to be real and honest with you guys because we've shared so much of our lives with you guys, end quote. Taylor and Cartwright share a two-year-old son, Cruz, together, but the custody situation is still unknown. In the most recent episode of Jersey Shore Family Vacation, Angelina Pivek shocked the group by revealing that her and Mike the Situation Sorrentino went out on four dates before the Jersey Shore days. Quote, we were definitely into each other, we were, end quote. Mike, as Angelina added, she was also, quote, into him as well. Situation then pulled out his phone and found a photo of them from 2007, out together two years before MTV picked up Jersey Shore. Many cast members voiced their opinions, like Dina Cortese Buckner saying, quote, they would have been the most toxic I've ever met. You guys would have murdered each other, end quote. That's all I have. That's it for this week's hashtag Let's Get Real. We'll be right back after this commercial break. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking. It's safer than smoking. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. 
I don't I think that many kids, kids in my son's, son's school even do it. it. He makes, he makes fun, fun of his friend for being racist. He, he never tries. She's in the sauce. She's on her own. She's just a sauce. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never be. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start their vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is, prediabetes can be reversed, and for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. We're back with this week's New York Minute, and here to fill us in on all the East Coast entertainment news is Aaron Christensen. Thanks, guys. We're going straight to the Big Apple for our first story. Two-time RuPaul's Drag Race winner Jinx Monsoon is making a return to the New York stage. Monsoon, who wowed Broadway audiences with her debut in Chicago last year, is now stepping into the role of Audrey in Off-Broadway's Little Shop of Horrors starting April 2nd. Breaking Barriers, Monsoon is the first drag queen cast in a major production of the Howard Ashman Allen Henkin musical. Joining her on stage are the talented Corbin Blue as Seymour and James Carpinello as Oren Scrivello. Monsoon shares, quote, Little Shop of Horrors was my favorite movie musical as a kid, but Audrey is a role I considered out of the realm of possibility for me. To get to play her is, in this incredible production is terribly exciting, end quote. Monsoon, Blue, and Carpinello will be taking over from the current stars Evan Rachel Wood, Darren Chris, and Bryce Pinkins, who will be playing their final performances on March 31st. Grace and Liz, what are your thoughts on Jinx Monsoon joining Little Shop of Horrors and breaking new ground in theater casting? So as someone who loves Broadway and Jinx Monsoon, this is just an incredible and special story to me. Jinx was recently crowned the queen of all queens, which means she competed originally in RuPaul's Drag Race on season five, won that, and then competed in the All Queens round. So she is essentially the greatest drag queen that has been on the show, the most successful drag queen, and dare I say, one of the most talented. As Erin mentioned, she was in um, Chicago this like past season and wowed audiences there. Um, and I just absolutely love this role for her, specifically the role of Audrey, because this is just breaking boundaries on Broadway. A lot of people... Um, associate MJ Rodriguez as Audrey after her run in 2020 with the Pasadena Playhouse. She was the first trans woman to actually take on the role. And Jinx being a gender fluid individual is not only the first drag queen taking on the role, but to my knowledge, the first gender fluid individual as well. So I absolutely love what this does for Jinx Monsoon as an actor, but I also love what this does. It's an amazing opportunity to expand the roles that are included in inclusive for queer and trans identities on Broadway. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. I am not too familiar with Jinx's work, but I am a huge fan of Little Shop of Horrors, so I think that this is the perfect role um, to step into because Audrey is such a versatile role and this is such a versatile play. Um, and since we've seen how much it's been adapted, like it's gone from screen to stage, I think that the role of Audrey is perfect from it. If she's wowing audiences in Chicago, then Audrey should be uh, no different. Uh, what do you think, Erin? I really like the decisions that they've been making, casting decisions that they've been making for this off-Broadway production. I believe it's going to bring in a lot of new audiences, and I'm just really excited to see Jinx step into this role as Audrey. Moving on, the Broadway League has just announced a heartfelt tribute to the three-time Tony winner, Hinton Battle, who passed away on January 30th at the age of 67. Initially, only a few marquees were set to dim in his honor, but there's been a shift. In a turnaround, the Broadway League now announces that all Broadway theaters will dim their lights for one minute at 6.45 p.m. on March 12th, honoring Battle's legacy. The announcement comes after social media outcry and confusion over the earlier limited dimming. Broadway League interim president Jason Lack shares, quote, as we continue to remember Mr. Battle's remarkable talent and array of roles, 
the decision was made to dim all lights as the most appropriate way to recognize his legacy on Broadway and within our community, end quote. Undoubtedly, this serves as a fitting tribute to a legendary figure in their Broadway community. Grace and Liz, how do you feel about this tribute? I think in the past couple of months, we've seen um, that the dimming of the lights has been a tribute that's gone on numerous shows on Broadway. I think it's more special and more of a tribute than what we kind of see at the Oscars where people get like two or three seconds of uh, recognition. But I think that this is more heartfelt and this is more connected to um, the actor themselves. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. So the dimming of the lights on Broadway has been a long-standing tradition. However, marquee dimming is usually done by all Broadway theaters unless specific theaters, they cannot secure participation from said theaters. So it's interesting to me and almost surprising why only select theaters would choose to dim the lights for battle. Um, I know earlier we reported, earlier in the season we reported on the death of Cheetah Rivera, in which her death was uh, memorialized by the dimming of the lights on Broadway. Uh, but what surprises me is that Cheetah Rivera actually passed the same day as battle. So the fact that um, Broadway itself would choose to memorialize one, um, you know, outstanding actress, but not another outstanding actor who, you know, created so many memorial roles, especially his run in The Wiz. Uh, it's just, yeah, surprising to me. What do you think, Erin? I definitely agree. While it's disappointing that it was only select theaters to begin with for this tribute, I am happy that the Broadway League is responding to social media fans and giving him that, the tribute that he deserves by dimming the lights in all theaters. That's all the time we have left for New York Minute. We'll be right back after this commercial break. I know what you're thinking. I need a job. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. I need, I need a job. job. I need I a new, new career. career. Well, well, I've, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I wasn't, I wasn't happy with what, what I was doing. doing. After, After high school, school, I didn't have a plan. I, I just wanted to start, start working. working. I got, I got laid, laid off twice. twice. But you, you got to keep going. going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a two-year IT program. I found a medical course online. I'm now a consultant in the tech space. You have more options than you think. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. Maybe, Maybe you, you can, can make retirement, retirement happen. happen. After all, you made, made home ownership happen. happen. Homeschooling, Homeschooling yourself on loans, loans beefing, beefing up your credit, credit score. score. You're, You're like, like, yes! Sorry. Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, boxes, and, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. Home, home sweet home. home. You, you waste, waste house hunting. Now, now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. When we adopt the shelter, shelter pet, pet, we discover, discover their, their unique mix, mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Joe, spot on this last one. one. Uh, uh, there it is. They're a little bit of a lot of things, things. but they're, they're all, all pure, pure love. love. Michael Katz Flynn is here to discuss YouTuber Matt Pat's retirement and the impact he's had on YouTube. What do you have for us, Michael? Hey, hey hashtag. hashtag. Friday, Friday is going to mark a very, very sad day, day as YouTube, YouTube creator of 13, 13 years, Matt Pat, will be stepping down from his sports channel. channel. Today, Today, we will be taking a look back on his legacy, legacy and impact, impact on the platform. platform. Matt Pat was the creative force behind, behind Game Theory, theory a, groundbreaking a groundbreaking YouTube series, series that ingenuously merged realms of theory crafting, scientific inquiry, and video game culture. His imaginative content resonated deeply with audiences, leading him to expand his horizons to include the film theorists, the food theorists, and the style theorists. Yet the genesis of Matt Pat's immense online presence sprang from rather modest origins. Born on November 15, 1986, Matthew Patrick exhibited an early affinity for video games, earning him the affectionate nickname Matt Pat during his sixth grade years. Reflecting on his childhood at a Draw My Live video from 2013, Matt Pat fondly recalls the pivotal role games played in shaping his formative years. Matt Pat's appetite for knowledge and academic pursuits was equally evident, exemplified his unwavering dedication to scholastic excellence. High school saw him actively seeking out intel 
intellectually simulating endeavors, even sacrificing lunch breaks to enroll in elective courses like creative cooking and survival for singles purely for the joy of learning. This is a case compared over to his college years at Duke University where he not only continued his academic pursuits, but also forged a lasting connection with Stephanie Cordato, his future wife and integral collaborator on his YouTube ventures. Post-graduation, Matt had found himself grappling with the harsh realities of adulthood. However, fate endeavored when he stumbled upon the web series Extra Credit, which sparked his inspiration for game theory. Armed with little more than that formation and a fostering budget, Matt Pat embarked on a journey to create his series that would marry his passion for gaming with his thirst for knowledge. From the humble confines of his makeshift recording space, Matt Pat unleashed a torrent of innovative content that captivated audiences with its blend of gaming analysts and scientific inquiry. Matt Pat's audiences grew, drawn in by his uncanny ability to craft compelling narratives around their favorite games. The turning point in Matt Pat's career came with his exploration of the indie horror phenomenon, Five Nights at Freddy's videos that catapulted him into the spotlight and cemented his status as a leading voice in the gaming community. As his influence expanded, so too did his creative endeavors, leading to the inception of film theory, food theory, and style theory, each venture showcasing Matt Pat's unparalleled ability to dissect and analyze various facets of pop culture. By 2024, Matt Pat had a immense substantial following and left an inevitable mark on YouTube. Yet amidst his success, he made the decision to retire from YouTube, bidding farewell to an era of defined by creativity and innovation, unwavering dedication to his craft. Matt Pat's, Matt Pat's journey from, from humble, humble beginnings to internet luminaries luminary serves as a testament to the transformative power of passion. passion. Whether or not he branches out and creates another show or platform, time will tell. But hey, but hey it's, it's just, just a theory, a hashtag, hashtag theory. theory. Thanks, Thanks for watching, for watching. Now, now back, back to the, to the desk. desk. This week, Grace and I are playing a game of hashtag debate that albums edition. Let's get started with the first one. Oh, let's see. Okay. Oh, Olivia Rodrigo, I know you have a lot of feelings on this one, so I'll yeah. let you start. Um, I think Guts is her best album to date. There is no competition there. When we see Sour, it's like, oh my God, she's so cute, she's so sad, I feel so horrible. Guts, it's like, are you in my head? How did I, you get in my head? That's what I think. Absolutely. I understand that. However, I feel like there wouldn't be guts without Sour. And I feel like Sour kind of encapsulates the female, especially the teenage girl experience, mm -hmm. a little bit better than Guts. Guts, I think, is, like I said, a much more refined album, and it shows Olivia's growth as an artist. But Sour really encapsulates where she was at that stage in her life. And as listeners, pretty much the stage where we all were. I'm not sure where you were in 2021. Driver's License came out and it was all over the airwaves. Uh, but I feel like it just, it's much more of a raw and vulnerable album in my opinion, because it really shows like the heartbreak of growing up. Yeah, um, definitely a competition there. What Absolutely. do we have next? Pink Print versus Pink Friday 2. I love that we're not debating Pink Friday one versus Pink Friday I just, two. I don't think it's a competition. I don't, I don't think, think we can even either. talk about that and well, feel okay about it. Well, personally, I'm okay with it because I think Pink Print is a much stronger album than both of the Pink Fridays. Okay. Uh, that's just my opinion. As, right. you know, I wouldn't consider myself a bard per se, but I think Nicki Minaj is a very strong rapper, and I believe that some of her features are kind of her best work, but I think she really comes into her own on Pink Print, and that has some of her best tracks. Um, yeah, well, I am a Barb, and while <laughs> Pink Print has Anaconda, Pink Friday 2 has everybody, Pink Friday girls, just the memories, big difference. I don't think there's a competition, but Nicki did drop the best, one of the best rap albums of 2023, and then the worst diss track of 2024. Yeah, it was So terrible. I guess we can move on. <laughs> we can move on to the next one. Control oh. versus SOS. Big feelings on either side. I'll let you start. I think that SOS is a cultural renaissance. I don't think that any album can compare to it. When you look at Control, you're, you think that's where she started. She took a four, I guess, I think four year hiatus and then came back with SOS and got and swept at the Grammys, got, I, I believe, nine nominations. Mm -hmm. Um, and just every song sounds so different, and I think that it's just, it's just such a beautiful album. Yeah, I totally understand that, and I do agree with you there, but I believe that SZA is at her best when she's at her most vulnerable, and I believe that Control, kind of like Sour, is her at her most raw. Uh, I think Control, it, again, kind of encapsulates the experience of that first heartbreak, and songs like Prom and Love Galore kind of encapsulate the insecurity that comes with being mm -hmm. a teenage girl 
Um, so I, I appreciate Control more as an album, but I see where you're at with SOS. Yeah. Let's do one more. We're going to move to the outro. We're actually done. <laughs> uh, that's all we have this week on Hashtag That. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media accounts to stay up to date. I'm Grace Doyle. And I'm Liz Polito from the producers, talent, and everyone working hard behind the scenes. Thank you for watching Hashtag That, and we will see you again next week.